WrestlePro fans, I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. Violence Times Day was a very good show and a great way for WrestlePro to kick off 2023 with their first big show of the year. There was a pre-show match that took place before the going before streaming live on the premier streaming network. As we saw Skylar Mack and Yusufer L do battle with uh, all gas and no brakes tracks and the savage gentleman Victor Benjamin uh, Mac and Mac and uh, Yusufer attacked their opponents before the bell even rang Trax uh, took some punishment before getting the tag to Benjamin and I forgot how the match ended but uh, Victor Benjamin and Trax were victorious over Skylar Mac and Yusufer L as Skylar Mac was pinned and Let's just say, put back in the proverbial penalty box. Then we went on to the main show, as we had a great singles match to open up the show, as we saw the Bad Apple, Matt McIntosh, take on Action Andretti. McIntosh is pretty much uh, a guarantee in the good to great uh, wrestling, great match department. Um, Eric Action Andretti defeated the Bad, the bad Apple, Matt McIntosh, I, I don't know if something went wrong here because, like, like the referee counted the three and then he stopped and then called for the bell. So I don't know if something went wrong there or McIntosh was unable to, to kick out. Uh, actually, Andretti had picked up the victory. Uh, next up in a singles matchup, we see <laughs> Anthony, although his last name is not mentioned, do battle with Dark STG, accompanied the ring by all apologies for not getting his name. I mean, STG went right after Anthony. Didn't even wait for ring announcer Ryan Peterson to get out of the ring. And uh, let's just say Dark STG defeated Anthony. And let's just say he basically committed murder in a half. And not content with the victory, STG continued the attack. But then out comes Fala Ba, and he and STG go at it. Fala places a chair, sits it, like opens a chair in the corner, puts STG in it, and does that, I forgot what move that was, the late Umaga was known for, where Fala himself squashes STG. Is caught between, STG is caught between Fala and the chair, and the chair reaches the corner. Fala leaves the ring, then the manager whose name I did not get he has something in his hands and Doc STG gets up like nothing happened and they're like eyeing each other as Fala is like heading up the stage and STG still in the ring next up was the first title match of the evening as we saw Renee Michelle I wonder if she and Drake Maverick are still together she uh, challenged Lady Frost for the women's championship the funny thing is when Ryan Peterson introduced Bill uh, intro introduced Frost, he said, from somewhere cold. And when he said that, I, I said, well, you know, it's cold outside. And um, good match these two ladies had. It had a great finish. Frost did a like a cartwheel and she ended up up against um, like she did a cartwheel and she ended up like up, up against Renee Michelle in the middle of the ring. Against Renee Michelle herself in the ring and picked Michelle up for, for I forgot what, what they call the move in Japan, but I knew it when Nova, Nova in ECW, when he used it, it was called the Kryptonite Crunch. And uh, Frost retained the Women's Championship. Up next, we see, I guess it's the same thing, Mr. WrestlePro himself, Pat Buck, do battle with Dr. Bobby Wayward. Funny thing is, um, the fans always used to make fun of his name all the time, going wayward, wayward. Well, I had my uh, dry erase board with me, and I wrote wayward, and it didn't catch on with the crowd, obviously. Uh, I thought these guys had a good matchup. Uh, Bobby Wayward was victorious over Pat Buck. In this uh, bout. Next up was uh, another title match. As we saw. 
Victor Chase and Jay Cruz, the Brick City Boys, challenge Bronson and Boulder, the Iron Savages, for the Tag Team Championship. Uh, early in the bout, both uh, Boulder and Bronson were putting bear hugs on both Cruz and Chase, and I forgot who one of them even put the referee in a bear hug. Uh, I forgot how this one ended, but the Iron Savages were victorious over the Brick City Boys to retain the Tag Team Championship. Up next, due to what happened at 100 back in November, we see Max St. Giovanni challenge the King of the North, Dan Moff. Well, not challenge, well, they went one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, well, Moff eventually was uh, victorious, dropped Max on his head with the burning hammer. And after the match, Moff continued the onslaught. LSG's music, uh, for those who know, that's Max's brother, uh, starts playing, but then the music stops and Moff points the screen and there's a video on the screen in the back and they, somebody comes at the backstage and among them was GKM of the Ace of Space Academy and he notices LSG is down and hurting. So I guess maybe Moff attacked him back there before the show even started or made it seem that way. And then Moff got a hold of, brought some chairs in the ring and he puts... He puts the Max's left arm in one of the chairs, and he's going to concerto it, but GKM comes out, and Moff says, you stay right there, you move, I, you know, he was going to concerto Max's arm, so GKM gets out of the ring, and then Moff concertos Max's arm anyway, and bails out of the dodge before uh, GKM can get in there, gets in there, and at that point, let's see, yeah, they went to intermission at that point. Uh, the, the show resumed with Colton Charles taking on the Dominican destroyer Vargas, still sporting the on-the-spot title shot medallion he won one year ago at Killer Instinct. <clears throat> um, good match these two guys had. At one point, Charles scooped up Vargas for a body slam, and one of Vargas' legs knocked a referee down, and Charles had Vargas down for I don't know how long. The referee gets up, but Vargas kicks out, and Charles is getting on the referee's case for not getting over there sooner. Then Vegas, no, sorry, not Vegas, Vargas hits a jump kick, running jump kick, and pins Colton Charles to win the matchup. After the match is over, Vargas is looking at the referee. Vargas takes off the on-the-spot title shot medallion and hands it to the referee, so... I, I thought right then and there he was going to exercise his title shot, or maybe he was going to do it later in the show, but let's see, but, you know, who knows what the deal is. I mean, it's been a year. You know, Killer Instinct, when he won that medallion, took place on February, February 5th. Yes, February 5th, 2022. We're past one year already. I mean, is it invalid now? I mean, is he going to exercise it eventually? Ah. Next up was a triple threat match as we saw Justin Carino do battle with the Croatian sensation Mario Bocca and the big deal Craig Steele in what was Craig Steele would be his final matchup. Uh, at, one point, at, at one point, Justin Carino goes outside. He sees Craig's son. He lifts him up from the crowd. Bocca Attack stops Carino from that point, and I forgot how, but... Oh, actually, I do remember how. <laughs> uh, Craig uh, Boker throws Justin back, Carino back in the ring. Steele scoops up Carino for, I guess... Well, I know, this, I know the move's called Greetings from Asbury Park that the late Bam Bam Bigelow was known for, but when I saw him hit the move, I, I said, Greetings from Jersey! From New Jersey, and at that point, when he was getting when the, the referee was made the, went to make the three count, I said, "Thank you for a great career." And Craig's son and daughter came in the ring, and Craig thanked Pat Buck, Kevin Matthews, and and the boys for all they did for him. I'm not sure why Craig Steele has decided to step away. I don't know if he wants more time with his kids or 
if he has nagging injuries or why he's chosen to walk away. Up next is a singles matchup as the most professional wrestler, Brian Myers, did battle with AEW star Powerhouse Hobbs. These two guys really meshed, clicked, gelled together. Uh, Myers at one point hit a spear on Hobbs. Uh, Myers hit that, I don't know, was that Edge or Gangrel-like DDT. Uh, I forgot even how it ended, but Powerhouse Hobbs picked up the win over Brian Myers. Up next was a four-on-one handicap match. As we saw, Joe Clean, Stevie J, Brian Jeremy, and El Magnifico. All apologies if I got anybody's name wrong. As they did battle with AEW's Satnam Singh, accompanied the ring by Jay Lethal. No point in saying that Satnam Singh is huge. Over seven feet tall and... It's like these four guys just didn't have a dang chance. Big surprise. Uh, the, the end came when Satnam Singh pinned El Magnifico with a choke slam, or as I said, slam dunk, and pinned him to get the victory. After the match, Lethal comes in the ring, takes the microphone, and he thanked the crowd who, who were willing to pay money to, to, to buy his merchandise or get pictures with him. But he said, to those of you who didn't, screw you. And Lethal said, he, you know, also, another reason he came back, is he came, came to do the show, was to get a free vacation to visit his parents, who were in the crowd, by the way. And then I forgot what Lethal said about his opponent, CPA, and CPA comes out and the match was on. These two did pretty good together. Uh, lethal kept teasing his Lethal Injection, which is the, uh, that, that flipping front flip into the ropes ace crasher move which he eventually hit on CPA to win the matchup and get the victory hopefully Jay Lethal will be back in WrestlePro in the future and then it was time for the main event as the Silver Sniper TJ Crawford challenged LSG for the gold interim gold championship uh, of course the story was back in the fall I forgot what date, maybe back in late October, was it? Russell Pro ran a show in Crawford's hometown of Chicago, Illinois, and Crawford defeated LSG in a non title match. So, this is why the title match is happening. Uh, Leon, come, Leon LSG, he comes out and he's got like bandages around his midsection from getting beat up backstage, I guess by Dan Moff earlier in the show, well, before the show. Uh, these, these two boys did very good in the ring, and I forgot how it ended, but LSG defeated TJ Crawford to retain the interim gold championship. At that point in time, Dan Moff comes out, he attacks Crawford and gives him a burning hammer, and then he goes to give LSG a burning hammer, but before he drops him, out comes Dion Roosman, who was the gold champion up until... Until he was in, got injured last year. He comes to the ring and like Moff is like like ready to go at it with him. Roosman goes for a spear. Moff moves out of the way. Roosman spears LSG. Then Moff left the ring and eventually LSG sees what happens. LSG and Roosman start going at it. So many people from the back come out. I don't know if they're all wrestlers. Roosman and Roosman eventually speared one of them. Uh I think it was LSG did a dive off the top rope, out of the floor, on the Roosman and everybody else that was trying to break up the fight. Moff, in the meantime, was just standing at the top of the stage. And then eventually, when things calm, were, they were finally separated, commentator Dave Sturgeo said on the microphone to the crowd that he got word from Russell Pro Management that on Saturday night, March 18th, when Russell Pro returns to Rawway for... Wrestle Pro Fest, it will be gold champion Dion Roosman versus LS, interim champion LSG for the, well, he said unified gold championship. Well, instead of saying unified, he could have said undisputed, but he did say unified. And uh, that's pretty much how the show ended. You know what the funny thing is? After the ring announcer Ryan Peter thanked the crowd for coming and everybody started leaving, 
they played Bye 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 by NSYNC. Or as I called them, N-STINK. I was not a fan of the boy band craze of the late 90s, early 2000s. Boy bands are a bunch of sissies anyway. Personal notes, uh, it was great seeing Kevin Matthews, and Kevin, I didn't wish you a happy birthday, but welcome to the, welcome to the 40s, man. Great seeing Ryan out to Ryan Peterson. Uh, I noticed one of the Russell Pro Sign girls there. Uh, Thomas, I forgot how to pronounce his last name. I didn't notice he was there until deep in the show. I don't know if the crowd was as big as it was for 100 back in November, but, you know, still a great crowd making noise. And, and yes, there were WrestlePro chants at, before the show even started. Yeah. One thing I don't miss about going to wrestling and seeing wrestling in Rahway, when, well, actually, not what, what I don't miss, what I don't really enjoy is the fact that, like, the average time I get home from a show would be, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I got home, like, you know, after two in the morning. I actually thought about recording this video on the train heading back to New York City, but there were so many passages around, I decided I just, just chose to forget about it. And also, I didn't um, didn't do it once I got home because I was so tired and I just, you know, had something to drink and then went and went to sleep. Okay. Uh, let me see here. And also... I remember in the past, you know, there were so many vendors at, at these independent shows. Not just WrestlePro, but almost every indie, almost everybody and their mothers were vendoring at shows. I don't know if it's because the wrestlers have got their own merchandise to sell now. Because, you know, I was really hoping to buy, buy a wrestling t-shirt. I remember when uh, Tim, who currently runs Battleground Championship Wrestling, he used to v vendor there with Rob Feinstein. And Tim would have a lot of great old school t-shirts. You know, like he, I know, I think in the past I bought Roddy, shirts of Roddy Piper, Dusty Rhodes, The Legion of Doom, Randy Savage. Oh man, so many great shirts that I've bought from him over the years. Mm -hmm. Let's see what else I can add to this. Oh. Uh. Also, another thing, um, being, the, being the show ended like, I don't know, it was close to 11 o'clock the show ended. I know it was over between 10.30 and 11, because I know there was a train stopping in Rahway at 10.48 and 10.58 to head back to New York City, but I knew I was going to get those trains in time. I tried to go to Rahway Fried Chicken on Cherry Street, is it? But they were already closed. I wish I could have gone somewhere to get something to eat or drink after the show was over. But then again, that would have held me back even further from getting home. Maybe get home even later than 2 a.m. Okay, as stated, Russell Pro returns with Russell Pro Fest on Saturday night, March 18th in Rahway, New Jersey. As already mentioned, it will be LSG versus D... Wait, is it Dion Roosman or Dennis Roosman? I can't remember. All apologies. It's Dion or Dennis Roosman. Of course, it's from Alaska. They're going to go at it for the Unified Gold Championship. Or I, I, it's better off to say Undisputed. Because I'm tired of this interim shit. I mean, nobody wants to vacate titles anymore. I know it devalues a championship. And I'm sorry to say it. All apologies to those in wrestling. But as I said, Dion or Dennis Roosman against... LSG for the gold championship. I'm not sure if I'm going to come to this show as of right now, but we'll see what happens. I'm guessing Falaba one on one with Dark STG. Uh, well, actually, well, already scheduled to appear for that night will be Impact Wrestling's Heath, AEW's Nick Wayne, the return of Bad Boy Joey Janela, and New, new Dad. Sean Spears. Oh, Russell Pro. I don't know if you've ever had a, had it before, but have done one in the past. But have you? Would you ever consider doing a full fledged uh, women's show someday? I know there was like a tournament that went on for months to crown the first ever women's champion. 
And also, I can't remember who has it right now, but what is going on with the Silver Championship? Is, I can't remember if Falaba still has it or he lost it along the way, and I might have not have been at the show when that happened. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, uh, Primetime Sam Roberts was in attendance for this show, as was uh, Eddie Orengo, who's currently a referee at WWE. He used to wrestle throughout many Jersey Indies as Bandito Jr. Uh... Well, actually, another match I, that may happen, or I'd like to see if it happens, uh, T.J. Crawford one-on-one -on -one with Dan Moff. All right, um, you know, again, I enjoyed myself. WrestlePro doesn't disappoint. But then again, which indies do I go to that do disappoint? Um, let's see if I remember everything here. Okay, I guess that'll do it. WrestlePro, Violence Times Day was great.